Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman announces that in the case of a conflict between the value of the unity of the people of Israel and the unity of the land, the unity of the people was more important. Israeli Minister Yuval Steinitz says the Arab and Muslim world starts to realize that Israel is a key ingredient in the war against terror, as well as a vital factor for regional stability. U.S. State Department spokesman John Kirby welcomes Israeli statements in which Jerusalem views an Arab peace initiative of containing positive elements that can help revive constructive negotiations with the Palestinians. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman officially took over his post last night in a full military ceremony at the ministry's headquarters in Tel Aviv. Following the ceremony, Lieberman said that in the case of a conflict between the value of the unity of the people of Israel and the unity of the land, the unity of the people was more important. The Israeli top defense official who pledged to work in full cooperation with Chief of Staff Gadi Eisenkot and the IDF General Staff also noted that Israel could only conduct wars if no other choices presented themselves, that the Jewish state must assure victory in any conflict. Meanwhile, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said he would judge Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman based on his actions towards peace. Abbas stressed during a meeting in Ramallah with Jewish and Arab local authority officials from Israel's Galilee Regional Council that if Lieberman advocated a two-state solution, as to his statements following a swearing-in ceremony, nothing would prevent the Palestinian leadership from holding a dialogue with him. Prior to the first cabinet meeting in Jerusalem with its newly appointed ministers, National Infrastructure and Energy Minister Yuval Steinitz, who is considered to be a close ally of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, stress that the Arab and Muslim world starts to realize that Israel is a key ingredient in the war against terror, as well as a vital factor for regional stability, and noted that if an opportunity was presented to the Jewish state through regional air backing, it would try to advance a viable solution with the Palestinians. The Arab world and the Muslim world, more and more leaders uh, are willing to realize, to recognize that Israel is a very important country that helped to fight terrorism and to stabilize the region. And if we can uh, uh, use this in order to give another uh, chance for the peace process uh, with the backing of the Arab and uh, Muslim world, with the understanding that Israel should be recognized and legitimized, uh, this is something that uh, uh, we shall uh, try. The recent declarations by key members of Netanyahu's government were far from unanimous. Justice Minister Ayelet Shaked said that as long as the Jewish home faction was a member of the government, Palestinian state would not be established, settlements would not be removed, and no territory would be given to Israel's enemies. Meanwhile in Washington, U.S. State Department spokesman John Kirby welcomed statements made by Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu in which Israel views an Arab peace initiative that was proposed in 2002 as containing positive elements that can help revive constructive negotiations with the Palestinians. We welcome their stated support for a two-state solution. Um, as the Secretary himself has said many times, uh, the Arab Peace Initiative can play a critical role in advancing peace in the region. Uh, we continue to call on both sides, as I said before, to demonstrate with policies and actions their commitments to the two-state solution, and we're ready to support them in any way. The refer to Arab Peace Initiative, which at the time was rejected by the Israeli government, offered Israel to formalize relations with its Arab neighbors in return for Israel's withdrawal from territories it captured following the 1967 war, during which Israel conquered large swathes of land. In Prime Minister Netanyahu's statement, he noted that revisions had to be implemented so that a viable solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict would be attainable. Now with regard to the French peace initiative scheduled for later this week, Kirby stressed that the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry would take part in the international gathering in Paris 
which seeks to formalize a framework that would make a political process between Israel and the Palestinians possible, considering the deep mistrust and animosity between the two people. The State Department spokesman stressed that the attendance by the top American diplomat was aligned with the U.S. administration's policy to explore ideas and options that might help advance a two-state solution. It's not about going to please anybody. It's going, uh, it's about being there to be a, a part of a discussion and to explore ideas and options uh, that might help us get closer to a two-state solution. Um, obviously, and the Secretary said this himself, the, the, the first and most important thing is that the leaders themselves in the region have got to be leaders. They've got to make some tough decisions and they have to show um, in, in real ways, not just rhetoric, that they're willing to take the steps necessary to get us to a two-state solution. Um, and to date, they haven't done that. Israel remains opposed to the French initiative, stressing that only direct negotiations would bring about a viable solution to the decades-old conflict. Now to another matter, the Jerusalem municipality, under the directives of Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, issued a stop work order to the Jordanian Islamic Waqf, which is tasked with managing the Temple Mount, for a structure containing bathrooms on the holy compound. The order was issued because the structure was, according to the Israel Antiquities Authority, causing damage to important archaeological sites on the premise where both biblical temples once stood. The Jerusalem Islamic Waqf is, in effect, the civil administration of the holy site, which houses the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock and is considered the third holy site of the Muslim religion. Israel granted the Waqf authority over the Temple Mount following its peace agreement with its eastern neighbor Jordan in the early 90s, under which it was agreed that both countries would act together to promote interfaith relations among the three monotheistic religions, with the aim of working towards religious understanding, moral commitment, freedom of religious worship, tolerance and peace. Nevertheless, freedom of worship is not upheld at the holiest site of the Jewish religion, as only Muslims under Israel's directives are permitted to pray at the compound, with non-Muslims only allowed to visit as tourists. Israel knows that it is committed to maintain the status quo at the Temple Mount, which is the Latin term for the way things were before the war. Now to the United Nations headquarters in New York, where more than 2,000 students, pro-Israel activists, diplomats and Jewish leaders participated in the world's largest international anti-BDS conference. The conference, put together at the initiative of Israeli ambassador to the UN, Dani Danon, was titled Ambassadors Against BDS. It was put on by the Israeli delegation to the UN and pro-Israel organizations from all over the world. The conference opened with the singing of the Israeli national anthem, Atikva, including speeches from high-ranking officials from all over the world. Ambassador Danone called on those in attendance to unite in the fight against the BDS movement, stressing that it was the modern form of anti-Semitism. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.